Hello indie game fans, Slay the Spire did kick off quite the interest in roguelite deck builders, so much so that it has become a subgenre of its own. Of course, it's not the first title to do so, but it's the one mega breakout hit, where the latest news is that this developer is working on their next project, so if you want more, check out 10 of the best deck builders that you can play right now. Let's begin with Steam World Quest, a little bit of an anomaly on this list since it is not a roguelike and it's not an indie game which I usually cover which explains its spot on the list. But don't be fooled, this is an excellent game that is definitely worth a play. It comes to us from the Steam World people behind the Metroidvania entry Steam World Dig the tactics game Steam World Heist and even Steam World Tower Defense, with this game being a deck building RPG that is simply excellent. I like the variety of characters and combo moves that can be pulled off, and while the story is fairly generic, this is a mechanically great game that is worth a play. One of the relatively recent revelations that I came to know of is that developer Nerduk Productions is a one-man developer from Malaysia, so a huge shoutout and Southeast Asia represent. This guy is a flash game legend, having made many games that I remember playing on sites like Congregate, with Monster Slayers being an excellent entry in the space. It has you gathering a party of heroes and adventuring forth to slay monsters, and while you're able to acquire additional party members, it is more focused on the primary character, differentiated by the character class and their abilities, with the other members acting as support, but the large variety of character classes does make this worth a look. Games often do get criticised when meshing together random ideas, but in a select few cases, it does work well, case in point being new verse. It has you choosing one of three character classes between the Agent, Paladin and Summoner, battling through robots, demons, monsters, aliens, the undead and even regular creatures while using swords, guns, magic and even fantasy creatures like dragons to do so. As such, it really does have a wild mixture of settings, influences and designs, even having cosmetic customization for your characters which does look a little out of place. While it does have the fairly common Slay the Spire style energy system, there are interesting takes on debuffs and special abilities, even where blocking is different in this game, making it an interesting entry for sure. Despite the rather lo-fi look of Card Quest, if you love solid deck building mechanics, this is not to be missed. I do try to show this off whenever appropriate since it is truly a hidden gem with 4 character classes but where each have a number of variants which play very differently and provide variety. This is on the tougher end of things so expect plenty of game overs as per roguelike tradition but where the upgrades and unlocks will keep you playing. Many of the characters can build towards massive combos which extend your energy per turn so you can feel pretty overpowered with a good deck but do expect to get crushed pretty soon after you get the feeling since it is a genre norm after all. A 
title with Amazing Art is Pirate Outlaws, where you play as exactly that, sailing the high seas and plundering loot, fighting regular enemies like pirates, or supernatural ones like krakens, sea monsters, spirits, and maybe even Davy Jones himself. Interestingly, one of the main differentiators here is that of ammo, where you do actually need to reload your weapons, which has been hit or miss since some people found it to be annoying while others think that it changes up the pace of the game. There is plenty of content here, with a number of playable characters and multiple campaigns, procedurally generated of course, but themed around a certain idea. However, that may be its downfall as well, since you do feel like you need to grind to unlock items, but I found it to be fine and it's worth a play. The not so indie Grifflands comes to us from Clay Entertainment, best known for Don't Starve and Oxygen Not Included, where they managed to make a gorgeous looking and unique entry in the genre. The most interesting part is that deck building combat, in quotes, is used in both combat and composition, being fairly predictable in the first case but so interesting in the second. You're trying to get your way in conversation, either arguing and intimidating your opponent, or using psyops to trick them into agreeing with you, avoiding combat altogether. This game was released out of early access with three characters, each having their own story campaigns, certainly giving this some legs and is worth picking up. <laughs> A fantastic deck builder is Knight of Full Moon, one that is free to play, with a number of paid DLCs, unlocking campaigns and characters, but I found this to be the perfect entry point for many people since there is no barrier. The original campaign is a take on the story of Little Red Riding Hood, but where she ends up deep in the woods, fighting all sorts of monsters. I love the art here, so it is pleasant on the eyes, with again, plenty of content to go around. Let's kick off the top 3 with a new entry in Tainted Grail Conquest, a title that was released out of early access and has quite an interesting lineage. This is a roguelike deck building spin off of a linear turn based RPG, Tainted Grail The Fall of Avalon, intended to be a small, playable thing in early access while the developers worked on the main game, but somehow has taken on a life of its own. Additionally, the original video game is a spin off of a physical board game of the same name, so there are layers to this, but what you need to know is that this is excellent and is a must play. There are 9 playable characters with plenty of variety, and I do like the meta progression in the town building elements as well. It is pretty grim dark and brutal, not exactly a beautiful game, but the visuals work, making this a no brainer pick. Another 2021 release that is worth a look is Library of Ruina, one that many people are sleeping on since it is from a Korean developer. However, this has one of the most interesting battle systems that I've seen, where a single card 
can cause multiple character actions such as attack, attack, and block. There are layers upon layers to this game's mechanics as well, even having something called emotion level, which is a little bit like a limit break meter, as well as plenty of depth in the deck building with attacks, status effects, damage over time, counters, and more. It has a fascinating setup as well, where you do have to fight visitors to the library, where defeating them will turn them into books, which act like character classes and the deck building cards. Also, this is set in the same universe as the developer's previous game, Lobotomy Corporation, which has somewhat of a cult following as well, certainly being a great game that is still a dark horse contender for Game of the Year. Just when you thought hell was safe, the damned cry for your help again. And of course, Monster Train gets top billing since it is one of my favourite indie games of all time. Being fairly similar to Slay the Spire, but with what I feel to be so much more variety. You're escorting the last pyre of Hellfire on a train to reignite the fires of Hell, fending off the angelic forces with a combination of demons and spells. There are 5 clans to choose from, where you do have to mix and match the two, but each clan has unique hero characters which are a ton of fun to build around. Since we last talked about this, the developer did release a paid DLC titled The Last Divinity which adds one new clan and a new end boss of the same name, releasing it as a complete package on Switch, so no reason not to pick it up and for being one of the most content rich and best titles, it takes the number one spot. For more roguelites, watch these videos and I will see you after the jump.